uh, case four. A 40-year-old man with a periungual papule on the finger, and we've got an immunostain here, uh, CD34. I'll show you. Well, I'll show you this uh, first. All right. Look at that. Those histotechs were amazing. They laid out every little bit of that just side by side, perfect section. I mean, with only the tiniest little bit of defect. So if you're a histotech watching this, you guys are rock stars and you make my life possible. Thank you. All right. Who would like to take this one? I can do this one. I think we are in the nail and the nail bed region. Uh, and uh, I saw a poorly circumscribed nodule, uh, mainly in the dermis, and at other places it was invading into the subcutaneous yeah. fat. And uh, Always it, look yeah. at the whole slide on low power, right? Because sometimes we'll get a little extra fragment out to the side yeah. that can tell us some real important clues, and it's definitely easy to overlook that, but you you uh, found, didn't fall for that trick. Good job. These nodules were composed of, uh, these nodules were moderately cellular, composed of spindle cells, and at some places they were stellate. They are arranged in uh, sheets and small fascicles. Uh, the, uh, I did not see much ATP in these spindle cells, not very mitotically active. In the background, there were some exoid areas, some collagenous areas, and some blood vessels, uh, and also some mast cells. Good. Uh, and since CD34 was positive and considering the location and histology, I think this was good for a superficial acral fibromyxoma. Very good. And here's the CD34. Then we'll go back to the H&E. Dramatically, strikingly positive for CD34. And, you know, like I think, uh, you know, we've talked about multiple entities today that are CD34 positive. CD34, it's not, it's not bad like Vimentin, which to me is like totally worthless, as you probably know if you've watched any of my online content. I am not a big fan of Vimentin. It just doesn't ever change the diagnosis or, or help diagnostically, in my opinion, in modern soft tissue pathology, so I just don't use it. CD34 is, is relatively nonspecific, but it is, it is a very sensitive marker of certain things. So I do find it useful, but in very select contexts. Um, so here, look, the, the 34 just really strikingly highlights these cells. And you can really see this very like kind of whirling and swirling pattern in some places. Where is the, there's a good place somewhere over here I wanted to point out. Yeah, there's a, a kind of a swirling and whirling pattern that you could see in other things. So I want, you know, what else might be in your differential here? You're right. This is a superficial acral fibromyxoma, also referred to as digital fibromyxoma. Again, yet another entity that uh, Dr. Laskin has published about. I promise I didn't plan this when I picked these slides. Um, but uh, anyway... So what else would you potentially worry about here? we got CD34, swirling and whirling growth. So the, the thing I would worry a little bit about and, and did worry about in this case is dermatofibrous sarcoma protuberans because it's bland, swirling mm -hmm. kind of uh, spindle cells with um, infiltration um, and entrapment or potentially it looks like infiltration and entrapment of adipocytes, right? So this kind of mm -hmm. looks like similar to the islands of stranded adipocytes that are, it can be seen in DFSP. And so, D and DFSP can, um, it's, it's rare, but it can occur on acral surfaces occasionally. So um, I was pretty sure that this wasn't, but I actually did send it for fish uh, because I wanted to be sure. Because the big difference, I mean, a lot of people recommend that you, you completely excise superficial acral fibromyxoma because they can recur. And I think recurrence is, is actually more common in pretty much any spindle cell tumor on the hands and feet, just because the surgeon goes in there and they try to just take out as little as possible so that they don't cause morbidity. So I feel like spindle cell tumors on acral surfaces tend to have a higher rate of recurrence. It's just like a, a general theme. So people say to excise these, but you don't need to like aggressively excise them with a wide margin like you would generally do with a DFSP. So, you know, if you make a DFSP diagnosis on the finger, you know, you might end up with an amputation. So a lot rides on that. So, and they can have mixoid change. So I did send it and it was negative for collagen 1A1 PDGFB. And this one showed loss of RB1 by fish. So I, I think I'm pretty sure that I did fish in this one. I didn't have access to the immunostain yet. This was some years ago. And um, so this is now more recently, we recognize that this entity is another one that has RB1 loss, CD34 positive. It can have some palisades and spindle cells and mixoid change like the other entities that we talked about, the spindle cell lipoma, 
uh, family, cellular angiofibroma, mammary type myofibroblastoma, and now this, and they all have these overlapping features and RB1 loss. Now, this one is a lot more fascicular than a lot of the, the examples. And you might even argue, and in fact, I even thought about, this looks a lot like spindle cell lipoma. And in fact, before I knew about RB1 loss in this entity, because I, I can't remember what year that was described in, but it was relatively recent, I, since I left training, I believe. Um, and uh, so, so I had seen things before that looked like spindle cell lipoma in the hands and feet, and I thought, Gosh, does it make sense to be a spindle cell lipoma here? But now I recognize probably what those were, were, were acral fibromyxomas. So I think the, the new WHO calls them acral fibromyxoma, but the other names that have been used, I think Dr. Laskin's term was superficial, acral fibromyxoma, and um, Dr. Fletcher has proposed the alternative name of digital fibromyxoma because they usually are on the digit um, and oftentimes near the nail, periungual. Occasionally, they can can invade kind of deeply because remember, bone and soft tissue and skin's all very close together, together in the digits. And so, um, I have seen uh, one case that did invade down into the phalanx bone, um, and that's been described. And even still, it's they're still benign, but again, they can sometimes have local local uh, infiltration. So I feel like a lot of times these are going to be less cellular and more myxoid, have like a loose myxoid background with prominent vessels and kind of floating little stellate bland cells. Occasionally they can have some pleomorphism, but other times they're going to be more cellular like this. So I think as a general rule, you see a spindle cell thing with myxoid change on the hands and feet. The first thing you should think of if it's a bland spindle cell thing with myxoid change think about superficial acral fibromyxoma. That should be right there on your list. And then you can consider other options like perineuriomas, which can be swirly and whirly and can have, um, can have myxoid change. And I believe I stained this for perineurial markers and it was negative. Um, I'm trying to remember, it's been a while now. But uh, in the prominent vessels, let's see where the vessels are. Prominent vessels are um, usually a feature, just like you, you described. See, there's you can see the vessels here. They're not real big, they're small, but you can definitely see there's a there's a definite um, increased vascular network in the middle of this uh, lesion. All right, so superficial acral fibromyxoma or digital fibromyxoma, if you like. Quite a nice, nice example, because look at that, how perfect it's got right there underneath the nail fold is a really, really great um, slide of it. Okay, any, any questions?